Now, those of you who are YouTube fans will no doubt have heard of Stefan Smalhaus, who has a YouTube channel. Um, if you haven't, go and look him up. Uh, he's not the most prolific of YouTubers, but his videos are some of the best. Um, if you like small, beautiful pocket knives, his photography is exquisite. His explanations are uh, eloquent and incisive. Um, and uh, although he is German, he makes the effort to do the majority of them in English for uh, those of us ill-educated enough not to speak German, myself included. Um, this book, he wrote this book in 2000 and, or it was published in 2014, but it was translated into English in um, 2018. Um, now, the translator isn't credited on here, but it was somebody called Ingrid Elsa. Now, um, she is credited inside the book. Now, I like this book. I make no secret of it. It's interesting in many ways. Um, partly because there aren't that many books on gentlemen's pocket knives. And I happen to collect gentlemen's pocket knives. So this is um, particularly um, useful to me. And Arnie, my dog, obviously agrees. Um, I think what he's getting at is he's a... My dog, this is... He is a, a, a Catalan sheepdog that we rescued from a Perea in Spain. And um, my other German YouTube friend, uh, Arthur Brem, has uh, uh, rescued two dogs from the same horrible, horrible fate in Spain. Um, anyway, there's a history and construction of the world's most beautiful knife models. So basically this book does a few things, but one of the first things I quite like, there's a quote at the beginning of it. Um, it's available on Amazon, by the way. Uh, I don't have an Amazon affiliate link or any of that nonsense. Um, so, I mean, nothing from promoting this book except helping some of my friends find a beautiful book. But I, I like this quote here. Um, hopefully, I'll just move that. It's just a, mark, a bookmarker from the publisher. Um, it says here, uh, Then I resolutely unfolded my pocket knife and cut off a button on my shirt at the wrist. She is sewing at the moment, and this brings us closer together. Arno Schmidt, Heart of Stone. Now, what he's clearly saying there is that there are times in life when um, we don't have to use a pocket knife. He didn't have to pull the button off his shirt. In fact, he was creating work. But just that simple act brought him closer to presumably the love of his life. I haven't read The Heart of Stone, so I don't actually know. Now, in terms of what's in this book, I will, obviously I'm not going to go through the whole book because there'd be no point in you buying it then. But um, really, there are, I suppose, two big parts of it to me. First of all, is about the history. So there is a, a good deal of um, talk about the, the three great knife-making areas in... The modern western world being sheffield sullingen and then america um now one could add an extra chapter here of uh china although it's not in the western world a lot of the knives being made for the western world now are being made in china but the original history of knives starting in um uh, Sol uh starting with sheffield knives going back into i think about 1600s the um, little meisters of, of Hallamshire that made the, the knives in little workshops all around the city of Sheffield, which is in Yorkshire in England, by the way. Um, and then how, with the introduction of tariffs at the end of the 19th century, that move from Solingen and, and Sheffield took the um, knife-making world to America because that was the big market and with the introduction of tariffs on steel, it made sense. But anyway, there's a lot about that in here, so you can learn about it. We've then got, you know, there's all about um, the sort of 
you know what what's in a knife, how it works, what's what's the, a bit about steels and so forth. That's pretty good. But I think you'll get a you'll probably most of you who watch a lot of um, YouTube videos will know a lot of this. But it's still useful to get a little bit of of a catch up. And if you're relatively new to the knife collecting world, this is really invaluable. I missed a, the first chapter is just about you know what's a pocket knife, what's a gentleman's pocket knife. I suppose that's really what's the difference between a gentleman's pocket knife and a machete or a bayonet or a you know it, it's sort of defining his terms that makes sense um different styles and traditions um just looks at various things uh traditional knives and um uh, modern knives now what's at the end of this book and is what makes this book really oh i'll come to that in a minute so I'll just have a quick sort of flick through. There are some great pictures. If there's nothing else, uh, Stefan is famous for it's for making brilliant pictures. Um, so beautiful bit of buffalo horn. I think it's a bit of ram's horn. So these traditional uh, French knives, I think. Um, so you know we've got really old, really old knives. That's you know, that's, that's German. I don't know, sixth century. Wow. Now, see, I'll not go through all of this, but um, Solingen is catching up. Sorry, this is catching on my tripod as I flick the page. Um, and we get on to sort of modern, um, not the Great Eastern Cutlery, uh, Tidiot and Unexcelled. Then, as I say, you've got uh, Anatomy of Knives looking at both um, traditional knives and more modern um well that's just a back clock knife there's no i'm not sure there's anything in here about well there's bits about wood and, and stabilization and various other materials which is useful if you're a, particularly if you're a, a beginner a little bit about care oh what's the difference between patina and rust um hmm, my book they're both forms of corrosion and so in my book they're both to be avoided but that's just me So, uh, styles and traditions, oh, blade shapes, cross sections. So if you ever wonder what the difference between a hollow grind and a, well, he calls it a spherical grind. I would call it a convex grind, but that's, that's just me. Right, I've let the dogs out, so um, you can't hear Arnie anymore. Although you'll probably hear him whining to get back in in two seconds. But there we are. Anyway, so if we move on, um, there's just some beautiful... Beautiful pictures. Now, I want to skip on a bit because you really ought to just buy this book. I mean, let's not get away with it. There's a knife I've got. Um, in this day and age, when we see everything on the internet and we buy it and we get all the, um, the videos, we can see all these knives. And so you think, well, that's fine. I don't need to, to look at... Um, uh, pictures of uh, knives in um, in a book but I tell you once you get to the photo sections the photo section in this book starts here these are large so it's a four size book so these are large double page pictures of just the, the the lighting and the detail and the resolution is just something to behold. I mean, just look at that. Oh. Well, honestly, when I look at this book, it just makes me think my knife collection is rubbish because I haven't got half of these. But in fact, I haven't got a tenth of them, to be honest. Um... There are makes in here that, you know, we don't see these days. Linda. Um, oh, it's Bulldog. Bulldog from Solingen. Now, funnily enough, now here's a thing I wanted to mention. Warthog. Anybody know Warthog? Warthog only has 100 subscribers. It's a new YouTube channel. Warthog with a double G. Um, named after the um, A10 um flying tank i think is probably the best descri description of it airplane american plane but 
if you haven't subbed him, go and sub to him. He's got a really, really, really good channel. It's new. He likes traditional knives. And this week, he is doing a giveaway of a Bulldog brand knife in Mother of Pearl. The Four Blade Canoe. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Because quite honestly, I don't want you to sub him. Because you stand a chance of winning that knife that I would love to win. It is an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful thing. Um, don't just sub him just so you can win that. But sub him because his channel is full of things like that. He likes um, uh, Mother of Pearl knives. He likes uh, traditional patterns. He likes... Um, not un-American, but he likes non-American brands as much as... Um, you know, just collecting GCs and, and case knives. Um, he likes to buy Puma knives. He likes to buy Bulldog knives. And just this week, he has loaded up two Taylor's Eyewitness knives by uh, Lee White, made in Sheffield, uh, one in Amboina Wood and the other in um, uh, Buffalo Horn. Two absolute beauties. Um, and as most of you will already know, I collect those things. Um, I've got about 11 handmade Sheffield knives at the moment. Uh, I would really like to get more. I've only got four by Lee White. It would be great to to get more. But um, uh, I just go and have a look at the two that he's got. It just drives me on to want to want more of them. Anyway, that's um, Warthog um, and the Connection Bulldog. That was just coincidence that came up and it just reminded me. But, uh, you know, you things like um, these sort of uh, Makata knives. Oh, Puma, I love Puma. Puma, knife, Puma make brilliant knives. I've only a couple of them and the two that I've got were actually, they're not Solingen ones, they're made in um, Spain. But um, they're still beautiful. Tier, Le Tier, I'm actually going to... I'm going to um, speak in a thing in Strasbourg uh, next month and I'm going via Paris so um, I'm hoping to get five minutes to pop into one of the so Laguiole or Thier sort of shops in Paris or I believe there's quite a good one in um, um, Strasbourg where I'm going whether I'll have much time or money there for a day um, but like you all uh, see there we are and then stuff that i mean i've never seen a knife that even looks like that let alone that is that chaperon non tron on oh, i mean these oh sorry i, I mean I, this video could go on for a week if uh, if i'm not careful um ah the classic Nippon, Nihon uh, folder. Um, uh, Higo Nakami. Um, my mother, wife bought me one for Christmas. I didn't have one before that. And um, yeah, they always say what they're for. San Mai steel, sandwich steel. Um, and brass. Funnily enough, that's actually quite uh, like mine, except mine doesn't have the, the little bite out of it here. Um, yeah, mine's smaller than that. This is a, this is a larger one. But they're just, these are really nice. Ah, oh, here we are, look. Higo no Kami means governor of Higo, an honorary title that could be inherited and disappeared with its last owner. Now, um, that's something I, I've been telling people for a long time and I didn't know where I got it from, but that may be where I read it. I don't know, I don't know. Oh, case canoe knife, there's a knife I have. Lovely, lovely knife. Um, anyway. Oh, and there's one for Tobias. Um, um, a powder horn toothpick. Um, that's the Northfield one. And Paddy sent round a Tidute um, GC uh, powder horn toothpick the other day in aqua green bone. Oh, beautiful. There is, oh, it's one of the most beautiful knives I've ever seen. And it's only in Tidute. Shat and Morgan. Shat and Morgan was the premium brand of Queen um, and then yeah we're going to modern knives I, I I can't get so excited about a lot of the modern knives and I mean I know well I, I'm very fond of these um, this is the Enzo Burke I've got the Enzo uh, UK 
uh, or PK70, which is a UK and Europe specific mo slip joint model, but just great, 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 great knives. Ah, oh, I've had one of these. These, this is L'Epicurion by Robert David, another French um, knife. I've got one in them, Boyna Wood. Absolutely beautiful thing. Absolutely stunning. Mm. Anyway, you want to see these? Buy the book. Um, I think it was about 25 quid off Amazon. Oh, look at that. Ah. Anyway. Um, and that's basically where it is. Oh, the Menandi. I've had a, a Menandi that I bought for. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, the phone rang there, which rather annoyed things. I was just saying, but I got a Menandi from AliExpress. It's not Menandi, obviously, it's a, it's a total ripoff, but it cost um, eight pounds. And then two days later, another one arrived. So it cost four pounds. They each cost four pounds. Um, they're hardly the same thing, but it just makes me want one. And one day, um, one day, no doubt, I will, I will get one. Oh, a bit of spider co. I'm sorry, don't get excited about that. Anyway, that's um, probably sufficient. What I want to say is, this is a really, really good book. I really enjoyed it. Um, I had my copy read within the first forty-eight hours, but. I've not stopped looking at the pictures. I just keep looking back. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just a lovely, lovely book. As I say, Stefan Schmalhaus, who's German, makes his videos in English. His photography on his videos is brilliant. If you like um, cheese and sausage and and um, a nice bread, oh, you'll get hungry just watching his videos. He uses these knives for slicing up the bits and pieces. Anyway. I won't really say any more, um, but I would say I say you can buy this on Amazon. Um, I found it actually on uh, on eBay, um, and I said I think it cost, I think it was 20, 20 or twenty five quid. That pro possibly included shipping actually, um, but it's worth every penny. It just is. If you collect knives, get a copy of this book. And um, Stefan himself is is a, is a real gentleman. Um, you know, he often replies to the comments that I put on his um, knives, even though I probably embarrass him by drooling all over his um, uh, all over his videos and and saying how wonderful they are. Um, anyway, there you go. Thank you very much. If you like this stuff, remember to do the thumbs up and uh, feel free to subscribe. Thanks very much. Bye.